Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Whenever I picture some specific animals, let's say lions or flamingos or even something like ants, I always picture these animals living in big groups together. But sometimes it makes me wonder, why do some animals live in groups? Well, I think we better find out. That's exactly what we're going to explore today. Let's get into it. While there are many animals that like to live in large social groups, there are quite a few animals that prefer to live alone, and we're going to start with them. Animals that live alone are called solitary, tigers, polar bears, red pandas are all examples of solitary animals. Many solitary animals are territorial, meaning they don't like to have others in their space. They might mark their territory or even fight with others to keep them out of their territory. Being solitary does have a couple advantages, such as you don't have to share your food. While being solitary does have a couple advantages, there are also many animals that live in those large social groups that we mentioned before. Animals that live in social groups are called gregarious, and sometimes we like to give these animal groups kind of silly names. Some examples of that might be a pride of lions, a herd of elephants, a flamboyance of flamingos, or even a committee of vultures. Some gregarious animals, like a pride of lions, tend to live in kind of close, tight-knit family groups. Whereas other gregarious animals, like flamingos, which live in enormous groups together, could come and go without really changing the structure of the group itself. Most gregarious animals are working together for the survival and health of the group as a whole. A herd of elephants might work together to protect each other and each other's offspring from danger. A single meerkat in a mob of meerkats might make an alarm sound when they see danger to warn the rest of the group to take shelter. Some gregarious animals, like a colony of bees or a colony of ants, each individual has a very specific job that works to, again, help the group as a whole. Some gregarious animals might live together and find safety together, but the animals in those groups are more focused on their survival rather than the group as a whole. Caribou, schooling fish, and many different types of penguins are kind of like this. Now that we've taken a look at some examples of gregarious animals, let's focus in on exactly why animals are gregarious to begin with. One very important reason that many animals are gregarious is because there is safety in numbers. If an animal is living in a large group, it's less likely that they will be the individual animal that gets caught and eaten by a predator. My favorite example of this is with fish. Imagine for a moment that you are a fish and you're living in the ocean, you're swimming around and you're all by yourself when suddenly there's a shark and it's you and the shark. There's a pretty good chance that you are gonna be the fish that gets eaten considering you're the only fish there. But if you're a fish living in a group with a hundred fish, the chances of you being the fish that actually gets caught and eaten is way less than if you were a fish swimming by itself. Safety in numbers is a really important strategy, especially for animals who are very commonly prey species, but let's talk for a second about predators because there are many predators that live in social groups as well and many gregarious predators are gregarious because they can use teamwork when they're hunting. Let's think of something like an African painted dog, also known as an African wild dog, which lives in these very large packs over in Africa. They spread out around the environment when they're getting ready to go hunting. And as their prey is running away, they can all join in from different parts of the environment. They take turns leading the chase so that the prey is never able to outrun them. Once they catch their food, they share that food with the whole pack. Everybody gets to join in on the reward from their teamwork. 
The third and fourth reasons why some animals are gregarious have to do with mating and reproducing. One reason it's really important for some animals to live in a large group is because it's much easier to find a mate if you're living with a whole bunch of potential mates Anyways, you don't have to go searching for one. Imagine an enormous herd of bison traveling across the grasslands of America. When the breeding season arrives, they don't have to go out searching for a mate. They've got potential mates right in their herd. They might have to compete with each other to get the best mate, but they don't have to go looking for one. The fourth and final reason for us to discuss as to why some animals are gregarious is because some gregarious animals work together to help care for and protect each other's offspring. They work together to raise the babies in the group. One of my favorite examples of this is squirrel monkeys. When one female has a baby, the rest of the females in the troop may help to care for that baby. It'll even ride around on the backs of some of the other females in the group. So we just said there are four enormously important benefits that gregarious animals get from living in a group. Unfortunately, there are a couple challenges associated with being gregarious as well. And the main challenge that comes for animals that live in a group is competition. Competition for a couple things, including food, Remember we said the African painted dogs are all working together to catch their prey, but then they have to share the food with the rest of the group, which means less food for each individual in the group. Gregarious animals also have to compete for mates, and sometimes that is associated with dominance. Imagine something like a troop of baboons. The dominant male in that group, the biggest and the strongest, he's in charge of the group and he gets first pick at who he'd like his mate to be. As other males get older and bigger, they might compete with the dominant male for that higher ranking in the group. There is one more challenge that we need to discuss before we wrap up that social animals have to face and it has to do with one creature in particular and that would be humans. When animals live in a large group together, it is much easier for hunters or poachers to catch and kill these different animals. Think of something like fish or deer or buffalo, all sorts of different animals that humans hunt or poach. It's much easier for hunters or poachers to find and catch those animals when they are living in a big group together. So even though we know that there are definitely some challenges associated with being gregarious, we did also learn that there are a ton of benefits. And that is why so many animals are gregarious is because of those important benefits. So we are completely wrapped up with our gregarious animal topic, our social animal topic. If you would like to test your knowledge, quizzes, watch more videos, do activities and projects, be sure to click that link below to visit our website and I cannot wait to see you at our next adventure. Thank you!